Hi, this is Sean Wildermuth with Coding Shorts again. Today we're going to be talking about JavaScript, specifically modern JavaScript, and two features that it took me a little while to get my head around, so I thought I'd make a video. We're going to talk about the spread operator and the feature called destructuring. These are two that are a little bit the opposite of each other, but you can use in modern JavaScript in some really interesting ways. Let's take a look. So let's talk about these two JavaScript operators. And I've got some colors defined here as an array and then an object I've defined. We're going to use it to explore these operators. Let's start with spread. The idea of the spread operator is to take an object or an array and decouple it from its container. So in the case of colors, if we did three periods and then colors, what we would expect here is to return those three elements. And so let's see what that actually looks like. Let's create a quick function called write colors. And I'll just say color one, color two, and color three. And I'll just write color one. Writes a little function I have sort of hidden here just to throw it into a web page real quick. And if I call that write colors using that spread, it's going to pass them into this function as three elements. And if there's more than three elements here, it will ignore, be part of the arguments object. If there are fewer than three here, then the missing ones will just be undefined. And so if we look at this in the browser, we can see I've just literally just returned color one, color two, and color three as just values there. We can do the same thing if we wanted to create a new object like more colors. And let's say I want to say yellow, beige, and then I can use the spread operator again to say colors. And what is this going to do? This is going to go ahead and add that more colors. This will just look at it as a JSON object and show it. We can now see that we get an array that includes the yellow and beige and then those three different colors. So I don't have to append it. I'm really saying just decouple this to the array and pass it in as one or more objects. With arrays, it's interesting. I find it much more useful when we start to look at objects. And so let's say I wanted to create an order, and I'm going to create a new object for that. And I'll say the order ID is 1, and the order date is new date. Here I could say customer. And then let's write JSON there so we can talk about what happens to our order. Because what this dot, dot, dot customer is doing is saying, you know what, take all the fields of the customer object and also add them to the order here. So we come back here, we can see that we now have an object that has the order ID and order date, but then has those three pieces of the order itself. And this can be really useful as you're constructing objects or passing them in or wanting to add where you want to add an unknown number of properties from some object you're getting to another object. I really like this instead of having to then manipulate and add properties one after one. This simply lets me say, go ahead and take the properties and add them to this. And the order of them will be wherever this happens. So this could be customer here and the order ID and date after it, right? It doesn't really matter. If we look at that again, we'll see our name, contact, and credit limit are first, and then those order ID and date happens afterwards. And that's essentially what the idea behind the spread operator is, is being able to deal with the members of some object, and that object may be an array or an object syntax, and be able to treat them as individual items in some way. And sort of the reverse of that is destructing. So let's take those same objects here and let's start with the array. The idea that we have an array here, we could actually, let's start with the customer because I think it makes a little bit more sense. So let's say I want to take the value from customer and put it into a local variable. So I might say customer.name and let's say credit limit equals customer.creditLimit. Not an uncommon thing that you might want to do, might want to be passing them in, whatever the case is. And what we want to do is not actually destruct or here, is we want destructuring. The idea here is pretty simple. 
is instead of defining these individually, I want to take the object and pull out the properties. And I can do that by using, in this case, an object syntax to say, hey, when you assign this customer, pull out the fields that have these names in them. Now, I can't rename these like I could if I was just doing a simple let, but usually that's not what you want. And so if we write our name here, unsurprising, we'll get the name of the company. But what if we said something like last name, right? There is no last name in our customer, right? It has a name, a contact, and a credit limit. There is no last name. Therefore, it's going to say it's undefined because it is trying to match the actual names of the properties here. It is not trying to find them by ordinal or anything like that. So you don't need to know the structure of exactly how that works. And this same procedure is pretty common if you want to be able to return multiple values from a function. So let's create a quick function and I'll call get customer, right? And I'll return our customer object. So I may not know what all is being returned here, but I certainly can say let credit limit equal get customer. And so the fact that I'm returning an object here could be one that I'm constructing on the fly, like results equals five and credit limit customer dot credit limit, right? Or if we actually mix them together, let's say customer. So here we're using the spread to return this and credit limit. Oh, we've already used credit limit. Let's do contact instead. And notice that, you know, even though we're constructing what the different things are here that we're returning, we can still grab one individual object. This could have been result. This could be contact. And then we can, of course, write contact. And hopefully you can see that it's just returning me because that ends up being part of it. For arrays, it works really in the same way except the names aren't matched. They're just looking for members. So if I say let first and second, sorry, these should be, since we're dealing with an array, needs to be an array syntax here, and then I can say colors. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take the first two objects and do what? It's gonna allow me to say write first, write second, and that should be, because the order of our array up here is red and green, should see red and green there as well. And so in both of these cases, being able to destructure our objects can be very useful in developing, especially if we don't want to be dealing with large numbers of properties that maybe a complex object has. We just need the couple we need and we want them as local variables. This becomes really easy to use. Hopefully I've shown you how the spread operator and destructuring works and you'll be able to use it in your own JavaScript code at any time you'll be able to use it in your JavaScript code in your next project. This has been Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts. Thanks for joining me.